other coders. So long story short, multiple or multivariate linear regression is used to estimate the relationship between two or more independent variables and one dependent variable. If you remember in the previous lesson on simple linear regression, if you haven't seen it, by the way, follow the link in the description and check it out. So in case of the simple linear regression, we're looking at the window stacks where we had a relationship between the number of windows your house has and the tax you have to pay based on that number. So the formula of the regression line looked like this, where y is the predicted value of the dependent variable for any given value of independent variable x, alpha is the intercept, in other words it is the predicted value of y when x is zero, and beta is the coefficient or the slope that explains how much we expect y to change as x increases, and the error term of course. We've also mentioned that in some cases a different notation is used, where instead of our alphas and betas we get beta zero and beta one, and in case of multiple linear regression will exploit the other type of notation. It is easier to use betas with different subscript numbers when we have a growing number of variables in our regression and well the error term of course. And of course multiple linear regression makes all of the same assumptions as simple linear regressions such as homogeneity of variance. The size of the error in our prediction doesn't change significantly across the values of the independent variable. Independence of observations. The observations in the dataset were collected using statistically valid methods and there are no hidden relationships among variables. Normality. The data follows a normal distribution. Linearity. The line of best fit through the data points is a straight line rather than a curve of some sort of grouping factor. Here we open our Google Collab notebook and we will begin with imports. We've used many of these libraries before, in particular in the video dedicated to the simple linear regression. So we import NumPy as NP and Pandas as PD. The next library we're going to import is called Seaborn. If you've never heard about this library and don't know how to use it, I've got the whole lesson dedicated to plotting on this channel. So we import Seaborn as as B and we set the style of our plot to white grid. Next one is another plotting library called matplotlib.pyplot and alias will be PLT, so SPLT. And of course, we want our plots to be displayed in the same notebook rather than opening them in a separate pop up window. So we specify matplotlib inline. And of course, we import sklearn that gives us access to the regression models. And also, you're going to be using the scale. So from sklearn linear model, we import linear regression. And also from sklearn pre-processing we import the scale and also we're going to be using rc params same as in simple linear regression from the pileup these rc params we'll use to specify the scale or the size of our plot so we write from pileup import rc params and on the next line we write rc params then inside the square brackets we'll put figure.fig size and we specify the size. So RC params figure.fig size will be equal to 10 by 8. And for this exercise, we'll also need a counter. So we import counter from the collections module. All right, so it looks like we've done with all our imports. So let's run the cell. And once it's finished, we can get on with the data we're going to be practicing on in this lesson. Now I've pre-populated this notebook with the code that will allow me to upload the data set to my Google Drive and work from there. And of course, in the description under the video, you'll find all necessary links. So there will be a link to the data set. In fact, 
this data set is uploaded to the Avacodus GitHub repo and can be downloaded from there. And also the link to this Google Colab, which you can upload to your Google Drive or save to your Google Drive can be found in the description as well. All right, so the Google Drive is mounted and the data folder contains the data set we're going to be using for this lesson. So I'm going to just copy and paste the absolute path to the data set. This data set, enrollmentforecast.csv, is quite a famous uh, data set among many data science students. It consists of some enrollment data which was collected in New Mexico in 1960s, I believe. We'll store the data in our data frame, which we'll call enrollment, so pd.readcsv, and we pass this data. And let's check. Let's run the cell and check on the first five records. So year one will be 1961, and uh, year 29, I believe, is 1989. Then role is the fall undergraduate enrollment. And M is his uh, January unemployment rate for New Mexico. Age grad is spring high school graduates in New Mexico as well. And Inc. is the per capita income in Albuquerque. Since Pandas automatically presented us with the names for the columns, we don't really need to write this code. But since Python insists that explicit is better than implicit, let's explicitly write the names for the columns. All right, now let's inspect our data for correlations. And we can easily do that using the pair plot from Seaborn library. So what we're going to do is in this new cell, we're going to write sb.pairplot and we're going to pass the enroll as an argument and we'll launch this cell. Um, oops, it's actually enrollment. All right, let's run it again. All right, as you can see, it is pretty majestic. So let's have a look at the relationship between let's say unemployment and enrollment. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish a linear relationship between um, the predictors and predictant. Could have been better. Let's uh, have a look at uh, the relationship between age grad and enrollment. And it looks pretty good. We could actually see that there is a linear relationship between age grad and enrollment. So basically what we're trying to understand is is there a linear relationship between this predictors and predictant? Predictors are going to be age grad and unemployment, and predictant is going to be the enrollment figure. We also need to make sure that these variables are continuous numeric, which they are, and also that these two variables are not dependent on one another. So we need to check the correlation between them. So on a new line in a new cell, we write print, enrollment and then dot core for correlation and by default core function will use the Pearson correlation so let's have a look at this table for example you see that year and year do have a linear correlation so it's 1.0 but if we look at the anum and age grad so these are features we're going to be using as predictors so the Correlation there is pretty low, so it's 0.17 or 18 if you round it up. So we can see that we can clearly and safely use the unemployment and age grad as our predictors for our linear regression model. All right, then, so let's try them out. First of all, we'll create a subset that will consist of only the values from the unem and age grad columns. So in a new cell, we write something like enrollment data will be equal or we'll store the enrollment values of columns on M and H grad. So we write them inside the square brackets on M and H grad. 
and then we finalize this with dot values. And we also need to define our target variable, which will be row for enrollment. So enrollment target, we're going to take enrollment and we're going to use the row column only and also dot values. Okay, so this gives us our predictors values and our target variable or labels values as well. But we also need to specify the names for our predictors. So enrollment data names, and we'll set it to be equal to anam and hgrad. But this time, no dot values. But of course, before we'll use our data in this linear model, we will need to scale it. So X will be our predictors, Y our targets, and we'll call scale on enrollment data and enrollment target. All right, after we've done that, it is time to check for some missing values as well. So let's run this cell. And in the new cell, we'll check for missing values. So let's start a new cell. And first, let's give uh, some descriptive comment, missing values. And we'll try to use a somewhat um, unorthodox way to check for missing values. We're going to basically filter them um, out. So missing values will be uh, equal to x, which is our predictors, um, then equal to np.none. So then on the next line, we say x missing values equals to true. So we're going to filter any position that is true. But of course, if you remember in lessons dedicated to the EDA, we were using more conventional um, code to report or replace missing values. Here we can see that we have no missing values, luckily. And now the time has come to unpack the linear regression model. So in the new cell, we're going to instantiate a linear regression object. We'll call it a lean reg. And it's going to be equal to linear regression, which is a model from sklearn. And once again, check out how easy it is. So we just call lean reg fit and we fit our model to the data to X and Y. And here we can also print out the score. How well does our model do on this data? All right, so let's launch this cell and let's see what kind of a score. This is R square score. So we see that it is 0.84 or 85. If we'll decide to round up, which is a pretty good score. And of course, similarly to the simple linear regression, we can print the intercept and coefficient values. So just as a reminder, the coefficient value is this value that we multiply the predictor value with, and it is basically uh, the measure of the slope. And the um, sign of this coefficient can tell us whether we have a positive or negative correlation between each independent variable and the dependent variable. And the intercept, which is sometimes called the constant um, in a regression model, it represents the mean value of the response variable when all the predictor variables in the model are equal to zero. In simple words, it is the point where the function crosses the y-axis. Why we need to know them? Well, they can help us to define the linear relationship between two variables or more and can in this case be like several predictors and one predictant. It can help to estimate um, average rate of change if you'd like. So let's do some predictions. So YPRET will store the actual values we're trying to predict. So this will be our enrollment figures and predict function from the SQLearn 
linear regression will use X or the predict tons on employment and age grad as its argument. And we can print the prediction or Y pred and also you use the separator, which is going to be a new line. So we'll print each prediction on a new line. And as you can see, here is the array of predictions, which is going to be the enrollment figure. In theory, this score function gives us a notion how often our model will be correct to predict this value. So in 84 cases out of 100, for example, but the ratio is, of course, very different. The R square, which this score function uses under the hood, is a measure that indicates how much variation of a dependent variable is explained by the independent variable or independent variables in our regression model. Or in simple words, it tells us how close the data points are to the fitted regression line. And speaking of lines, let's actually plot what we've got. So plt.plot, and we pass our predictors and predictant. And also we specify the shape of the points that we want to see on our plot. And I want to see red triangles. Therefore, I specify R with this hat. And then plt x label. So we need to label our data on x and y axis. So x label represents it was enrollment data, which is unemployment and age grad. And the y label will say enrollment target. So this is our enrollment variable. So enrollment data here and copy enrollment target for y label. And then, of course, we need to give a command to show us this plot. Let's run the cell. And because we specified matplotlib inline, we see this plot under the cell in the same notebook, not in the pop-up window. And as a homework, you can plot the values we have predicted in the last cell. And also you can take any other famous data sets, such as, for example, diabetes data set, the house price prediction, and try this method on that data set. But anyway, please give this video ample thumbs up, toll the bell, and subscribe to the channel. That was V, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.